Hello everyone. This is Amit Garain here. I am here to enlighten you on performance testing via some tutorial videos. So, if you are new to performance testing and engineering and you want to learn about these topics, I would like to assure that you are in the right place. Without wasting your significant time, I will directly start with our first topic, which is the overview of performance testing key concepts, part one. So, let's get started. First of all, what is performance testing? Performance testing is one type of non functional testing, which is mainly required to understand any application behavior in terms of application response time. Application throughput, capacity, reliability, durability, under a significant workload. Now, what does workload means? Workload may refers to number of concurrent users, number of concurrent HTTP requests, or number of concurrent jobs, maybe printing jobs, etc. Next is why it is really necessary for any application to do a performance testing. In today's digital world, no one is having any leisure time to wait for anyone or anything. If you can't serve the item any customer has requested for within their timeline, you might lose any significant customer. Because today there are so many options available. For example, let's consider any e-commerce application. There are lots of online site like Flipkart, Amazon, Snapdeal, etc where you can purchase whatever you like. Consider, Amazon is giving 50% flat sale on any electronics product for two hours on the 29th of February 2017. Assuming, on any normal day, the number of users in Amazon is 2 million. As Amazon is a popular brand, a sharp rise of customers can be seen during this two hours to buy any electronic product. Assuming, during that two hours, number of customers has been increased up to 6 million. Now if the Amazon application is not capable enough to handle these many number of requests, either the servers are going to crash or the response time for any product page is going to be pretty high, which in turn going to affect customers resulting to revenue loss for Amazon. Now, what are the different types of performance testing? 1. Load testing. What is load testing? Without breaking your application, you always first want to verify how many average or maximum number of users my application can support without facing any challenges. Challenges can be for example, response time of every single critical transaction. Transaction means any action performed by user or resource utilization of application and web and database server with respect to CPU, memory, thread, connection, session etc. To measure the application performance under average and maximum number of users without facing any major challenge is called average and peak load testing. 2. Stress testing. If you want to test the breakpoint of your application, this is the right scenario for you. Stress testing is mainly done to find out the breakpoint of any application under concurrent user load. Number of concurrent users or HTTP requests will be gradually increased on your application until and unless the application servers crashes. At what amount of users or requests your application breaks, that will be considered as the limit or breakpoint for the application. 3. Spike testing. Sometimes it can be seen that any application is getting a sudden burst or spike of concurrent users for minimal duration, maybe fraction of seconds or minutes. If the capacity of your application is not strong enough to handle the sudden spike in terms of requests and users, the application server might crash. Hence it is always recommended 
to prepare your application with respect to performance for these type of situations by performing spike testing for your application. Fourth is endurance testing. If you have just bought any electronic product, you may not find any problem or bottleneck with that one immediately. Once you use it for a long period of time, you may start to observe the issues, if any, with that product. Similarly, for your application, you may not find any resource leakage, like memory leakage, out of memory error, thread pool leakage, connection pool leakage, if you run any average and peak load test. Hence, you have to run the test for a longer period of time, like 8 hours, 24 hours, 1 day, 2 days or more, to find out any leakage issue. Now, fifth one, what is failover testing? A simple architecture of an application is shown in the above picture. Two Tomcat servers, which are active passive clustered nodes, will accept the incoming HTTP request from client, but at any point of time, one will be active and other will be passive, that is. In simple terms, it will be shut down. Let's suppose, due to heavy incoming traffic, first Tomcat server crashes. Now second application server needs to be up and running as soon as possible for accepting the incoming requests from client. So, failover testing is required to test how fast it is possible to allocate extra resource and to move operations to backup systems during the server failure due to one or the other reasons. That is all for today's tutorial video. I will prepare more videos on performance testing key concepts, performance testing tools like Load Runner, JMeter, NeoLoad, VSDS, etc. Performance monitoring tools like Wiley Introscope, Splunk, Dynatrace. Sitescope, Perfman, JVisual VM, JConsole, JMC, etc. Please let me know, in case, of any questions, or doubts, via comments. If you like my video, please do like, share, and subscribe, to my channel. Please also, go through my blog, on performance testing, link given below, in the description section. Please keep tuned to my channel. Thanks guys. Bye bye.